Hi, Dr. Murray with Uncivilized Vitality, and um, we're going to keep talking about uh, what you saw earlier in the video, or uh, maybe this will come at the beginning. Let's talk about hypothermia. So in the earlier part of the video, you saw the, the after effects after I dipped through the lake. Now I had not uh, gone fully submerged. Uh, one, I didn't know how deep the lake was there. Uh, honestly, I thought it was going to be maybe three or four feet deep, and I was just going to crouch in the ice, but then when I slipped in the hole, uh, there was no bottom there. So uh, I didn't plan to go submerged, so I could keep talking during the video. Uh, so I was only in there maybe 10 seconds, but still I got uh, quite a quite a dousing of cold and uh, that could lead to uh, hypothermia. Uh, hypothermia is anytime you're in a situation where your body is losing heat faster than it can produce it. So you can warm your body through uh, ex, um, extra extraneous means. So if you can't warm yourself up, you could rewarm in other ways. So that's basically how you treat hypothermia. We'll do a few more um, a little more detail in, in just a couple minutes. Uh, the major issue with hypothermia and how hypothermia kills is through inducing shock. And shock is the inadequate perfusion of tissues, meaning you can't get oxygen out to uh, tissues and then tissues die. And uh, you can get shock, there's psychogenic shock, um, hypovolemic shock, uh, lots of different uh, anaphylactic shock. Anytime you're having shock, hypothermic shock, is is the uh, end result of hypothermia, the condition where you're losing heat faster you can produce it. It comes in a couple of varieties. Mild hypothermia, normal body temperature is um, 98.6. People kind of remember that, 98.6. If your body, and when I say body, I mean your core, don't worry about your extremities right now. They're going to have different temperatures. And this is why to exposure you lose um, fingers and toes and nose and ears quicker to frostbite than... Uh, you're not going to get frostbite and lose a chunk of your torso while your fingers are okay. So you freeze from the extremities to the core. And you're going to want to warm from the core to the extremities. Normally you're at 98.6, meaning your body. Uh, if you get down from 95 to 90 degrees, that range is typically considered mild hypothermia. You can sort of reworm, uh, reworm, rewarm through uh, shivering or warm drinks. You know, it's getting inside where it's not too cold. You get into moderate hypothermia when you're down between 90 to 82 and severe or life-threatening hypothermia when you are less than 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I also threw in uh, 35 to 32, 32, 28, and less than 28 for our uh, Celsius-loving Canadian friends. So those are uh, ranges of, of hypothermia. And you don't have to go through a lake uh, or dip in the ice-cold water. Uh, even for a few seconds, 30 seconds, you're in, a, you're in danger uh, in, a, in a frozen lake of slipping into moderate hypothermia. Uh, and if you don't rewarm quickly or get out of the, the water, you get down to uh, life-threatening hypothermia if you're, if you're not uh, careful and take precautions uh, like we did in the other ice dunking video. Uh, we pre prepared ahead of time with, we had the fire in the warm clothes and we didn't film too much. I wasn't in too much danger. Uh, I got a lot of insulation. I was only in there for a bit of time. So if anything, I just, I got a little mild uh, hypothermia. But uh, hypothermia can come on not just from falling through ice in the, in the, the lake. Obviously, it's going to be uh, rapid onset hypothermia. But I can become hypothermic from uh, massive hemorrhage. I lose a lot of blood. Blood's what helps circulate your heat around that's produced by your body and your muscles. And if you've lost a lot of blood, uh, you're not going to be able to warm yourself as efficiently so you can get um, rapid onset hypothermia from massive hemorrhaging. You can have um, slow onset or gradual hypothermia, for instance, just being outside uh, at a mild 50 degree day, but you're out in a t-shirt and shorts and you're out there playing and you can have mild uh, hypothermia with a gradual onset. So that's the one when we're out camping, we're on our outfitting adventures, we're constantly warming people, uh, stay warm and dry. Watch out for the four horsemen of misery. Uh, we have a video on that. Cold, wet, tired, and hungry. Um, hypothermia is more likely if you are exhausted, so physically tired, exhausted, if you are dehydrated uh, and or hungry, and you will have a harder time resisting hypothermia, warming yourself with those other conditions. That's why they are present, that's why they go together. Try to stay um, hydrated and, when you're out and get proper rest. Uh, rule of threes, water and sleep go together and help set off uh, conditions like hypothermia. So rapid versus gradual onset hypothermia. I fell through the ice or I jumped through the ice, uh, purposely placed myself, and that's going to be rapid onset hypothermia. 
Uh, mild to moderate hypothermia, you can tend yourself. Obviously, when you get down to the lower moderate to severe, that's going to require medical attention. Uh, that's beyond the scope of this video, but just you're going to want to get to a hospital. Uh, they'll do things like they have warming uh, blankets and such. You can recognize hypothermia when um, mild to moderate. If, if there's no actual cause, like somebody's been out, like we went out uh, one of our uh, outfitting adventures a few weeks ago, a month ago, uh, really windy, a little bit of sleet, like sort of sleetish rain that turned to snow, but then the high wind was really stripping heat away from us. Um, so we had to watch each other for signs of hypothermia. Uh, low energy and, and irritability, um, small motor coordination, like dropping or fumbling, slurred speech. Uh, these can be signs of a gradual onset hypothermia. Uh, shivering, that's a, that's a sign of a mild, um, either acute, uh, like rapid onset or slow onset hypothermia. But uh, looking for those things. And what you want to do, obviously the treatment is re um, remove the things that are taking, taking heat away, uh, wind, uh, cold water, uh, wet clothing, uh, improper insulation. And then you want to stay dry and warm. So you want to put dry, warm clothes on the person. You want to warm from the core to the extremities. Do not uh, try to heat the hands and feet up uh, too quickly. Do not uh, rub vigorously on the skin. Do not apply heat sources directly to uh, arms and legs. We went out, let's say we went out hiking, gradual onset hypothermia, uh, skipped the earlier part of the lake when I went through. Right, well, let's start with that. I go through uh, into the water. You pull somebody out, get the wet clothing off immediately, dry them off immediately, put warm clothing on them. Get them near a heat source, and then if I had been in for more than um, the, the brief dunking I took, you would um, warm from the core to the extremities. You're going to put warm um, liquids, or warm liquids, warm like a, a hot water bottle or a heat source on the chest, the abdomen, around the neck, and in the center of the back. Uh, armpits, my groin, uh, that's where the hot water bottles or the rewarming things go, those little hand, uh, hand warmers. Uh, you don't want to warm from the extremities out too much. I know instinctively we put our hands by the fire, but if we got to the point of hypothermia, I don't want to warm my feet and hands up too quickly. It's a lot of physiological implications for that. Just think core to extremities. Uh, I would also warm core to extremities by getting some warm, uh, not hot, but some warm liquids into me. Uh, that can warm, get that heat in there, and those warm liquids radiate heat uh, from the center out as well. So warm uh Get them dried off and warm, uh, like insulated clothing, warm clothing, uh, warm clothes. And then core to extremities is how you uh, re-warm this person. Another good way to do that is skin-to-skin -skin contact. Get somebody that's all already dry and warm, not suffering from hypothermia, uh, get them together. Remember, hypothermia is losing heat faster than your body can produce it. So you want to uh, um, enable the, the person that's hypothermic warming back up, quarter extremities, keep them dry and warm. Try to spot hypothermia before it begins, before it leads to moderate severe hypothermia, which leads to hypo, uh, hypothermic shock, uh, which can be deadly, uh, lethal, especially way out in the woods. Keep your feet dry, change your socks often, keep your feet dry and warm, stay hydrated, uh, and protect your head and neck and hands and feet. Head, neck, hands and feet, keep them warm. The, uh, the smaller areas and extremities will get colder first, um, just keep an eye on each other. That's part of community. One of our community teachings is watch each other for hypothermia. Uh, here in Michigan, even in the summer, uh, we're out, sudden rainstorm, wet cotton clothing. You're out there, a little wind. Pretty soon you can catch hypothermia, mild to moderate hypothermia, even in, e even in July or August uh, in Michigan, if conditions are right. Obviously, we're more on guard for that in the, in the winter when we're out, especially around the ice or such. Uh, uh, hence these videos, but just be aware that hypothermia can occur uh, at any time. It is life-threatening. So there's a little bit of follow-up uh, to hypothermia. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you like this information, you like the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and the notifications and leave some comments. And then um, also don't try that at home. Don't go through the ice. I probably should have said that at the beginning.